Hi, Michael Patine here once again. And today we're going to talk about doing something to facilitate your mallets and your singing bowls and other small items. And I'm talking about making a mallet tray or two and a table to put all your small instruments upon. It used to be I put all the mallets and bowls and bells and things on the floor. And then I would stand up for most of the performance. But whenever I wanted to pick up a mallet, I had to bend way over. Or if I wanted to play the bowls or bells, I had to get on my knees and do that. So let's look at the first picture, which is the first version of all of this. And you can see I have two different sections there, and it's actually my stand cases. And what I did is I built two tables to go on top of them. And then I would put my bowls and bells on there, and that would get them off the floor. And each table is one foot by four feet. So I just went to my local Home Depot and bought a two foot by four foot piece of decent plywood. Had them cut it in half the long way, so I had two one by four pieces. And I went on eBay and bought some subwoofer amp carpeting. The type of thing they use building speaker boxes uh, in cars or even for bands. You know, the type of carpeting you'll see guitar and bass and PA speakers covered with. And that's really great stuff because it, it doesn't rip, it doesn't tear, it doesn't fray. And it's sort of stretchable too, so you can mold it to fit what you were doing. But these basic trays were real easy. I just took my staple gun and tacked one side on and then pulled it over to the other side and tacked it, tacked the ends, and there we go. So that was the first iteration of everything the bowls on top of the tables. And we can see that in the second photo. You can see it on top. I have a towel on top of the case, so you don't see the case. And then there is the small table on top of that. But as you can see in the background, I still have all my mallets on the floor. I got tired of all that. I got tired of getting up and down. So I ended up making some mallet trays, as we can see in this next photo and a table that I put on an X keyboard stand. First, let's go back and look at the first version of the table. And we can see here is a concert I did back in 2016. And I built this table specifically for the concert. It's two by four feet. And I put sides on it and covered it in carpeting. And then I put a couple of pearl tom brackets on the bottom so I could mount it on a Gibraltar stand. I wanted it to be very sturdy, and I didn't want anything to be able to slide off. It worked really well, but it ended up being extremely heavy. Just to lug that table around was a real pain. And I only used it for a couple of gigs and decided I need to do something better. And what was better was to take it apart and rebuild it. So I pulled the carpeting off and then I took a hammer and knocked the sides off. And I ended up taking the tom brackets off of it and then totally rebuilt it. So we're gonna look at that in this next section, how to build what in the percussion world is called a trap table. And the reason it's called that is because as a percussionist, you put your traps, which are all your small items, on the table. And in percussion lingo, that comes from way back in about the 1920s or so, when drummers had wood blocks and bells and all kinds of things on their drum set. And somebody said, hey, that's quite a contraption you've got there. And the drum set became known as a contraption, and that got shorted to traps. And sometimes you might hear somebody still say that they play a trap set. And that's what that means. It's a little bit of history there. Okay, so the first thing to build a trap table is to go to Home Depot or your local supply place. 
and get yourself a two by four piece of plywood, one half inch thick, and make sure it's not your real rough construction type. Make sure it has nice outer plies. What I have is a five ply. It's, it has three thicker core plies, and then each outside is a, is a very thin laminate of decent looking wood. And here you can see on the tag, it's called sand ply. So you want to get something that's you know a little better quality like that. And when you go there, you want to look at all of them because some of them are pretty warped. So pull them out and eye them down either of the long sides to make sure that they're fairly straight. And then the next thing you do is you need to pick up some strips. And these would be one by twos. And you can buy an eight foot section of that of pine stripping. And those are pretty cheap. That's probably like, I don't know, five bucks, something like that. I've got a lot of that here from some other projects. So I just used what I had. And the next thing you need is to get an X keyboard stand. And I suggest buying the double braced one because it'll hold things much better than a single brace stand. But you don't need the heaviest one out there because you're not putting a lot of weight on it and you're not going to be rocking it or pushing it or anything. So, you know, you throw a bunch of singing bowls and bells on a table or wood blocks, it, it's going to hold it. So you don't need the most expensive stand. So then you put your plywood down, either on the floor or a table, and set up your X stand. And you need to measure it so that it's even in the middle, both from the left and right ends, and then also across. So you want to center your stand. And I use a straight edge. And here I am. You can see i have centering it on the short sides here. And then measure in between the two rubber seats on there. And that's how long you'll need for the wood blocks that'll hold everything. So you take your one by two strip and you measure it off and you cut two pieces. Now, word of advice too, when you buy a keyboard stand, these little rubber parts, they tend to come off. So you'll come home from a gig without one. The first thing I always do is glue them on. I use liquid nails. You could use some other sort of adhesive, but I like liquid nails because it seems to hold and I haven't had any problems with things coming off. But glue all your rubber tips, your feet, the top ones, glue them all on. Okay, and then here we are. We've got everything centered and I put the strips down on either side. And this is what's going to hold the table. Took a pencil, marked where the wood strips go. And here's my old table redone. You can see there's the holes where I had the tom bracket, but then I changed it to this design. So there, put a little glue on the strips underneath, matched them up to the pencil marks, and then put two screws in. So here's the newer one we're making now. Same thing. Match it up, some glue, and screw it in. But make sure your screws aren't so long that they poke out the top of the table. You certainly don't want that. And here we have both of them mounted and ready to go. And then I like to paint the table. I know some percussionists who make stuff just leave it bare wood. I like it to look a little nicer. So I've got a can of Rust-Oleum semi-gloss black. I like the semi-gloss better than the flat black. And I just went and painted the bottom. So here we are in progress painting. Put a couple coats on there and it'll look fine doesn't have to be perfect because it's the bottom and nobody will really see it. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to paint the sides of the wood or the other side. And then you take your piece of carpeting. Like I said, I went on eBay years ago. This is, what, four years ago. and bought, I think it was about four feet by 15 feet piece of amp carpeting for under $30. And I've made those two short trays that went on top of my case. I made two stick trays. I made two of these tables. And I still have leftovers to make something else. So you don't have to necessarily buy that much. But I bought a lot because I planned on making various projects. So there's the carpeting. Sometimes they'll have a shiny side and a dull side. So you want to use the, the dull side as the outside. Lay it out and sort of center your table on it. And I like to have about a 
a two inch overlap on each side. That gives me enough room to staple it. So I've got this corner two inches and two inches, and then I cut the other side to two inches. Now I staple one edge all the way down and then flip it over, and then I use spray adhesive. There's different types you can get. Just a basic spray adhesive at the hardware store. Spray that whole side, and I spray the edges, the two long edges. I then pick the board up on its on the, the bare edge, not the carpeted edge. Pick it up and pull your carpeting over and smooth it down. You have to run your hand over it and smooth it and get the wrinkles out. Work your way from the top where you've stapled it all the way down to the other side. And then when you get that all worked out, set it on the top like that, upside down. And from there, we are going to pull the other end tight as we can and staple it all the way around. And then pull the edges. I just folded them neatly and pulled them and then stapled. From there, I took my straight edge and used a very sharp brand new razor blade knife and cut that. Used the scissors to cut the ends because I didn't want to cut all the way through the other side of the carpeting. And then there's my X stand. Pop the table on top there with the stand in between the two wood blocks. And now you're good to go. You have a very sturdy sort of trap table. And if you're going to put things like bowls and other items on top, you can go to Target or any sort of store like that and pick up some of that rubber shelf liner that you would put in so you can put your plates and bowls and stuff on. So I got a sheet of that and I just lay it across the table and put my bowls on there and then nothing skids and it, I think it makes them sound a little more resonant than just putting them on the carpet. And as you can see here, because I, I want it to be a little more decorative than just an X stand in this table. I put this Japanese silk tablecloth over it. And it's something that I got from my father who bought it in Japan back in 1949 when he was stationed there after the Second World War. So I like to use it, one, because it looks nice, and two, because it's sort of a memory of him. And then here's a picture we have the bowls and the bells sitting on top of everything. And then I have some other items just sitting on the table itself. And if you really want, you could probably tack that down onto the table, make it a permanent thing. And you could also cut another strip if you wanted to cover the whole thing. It's about 18 inches wide, so you could cut another, you know, half a strip and put it on there and tack it down. I just roll it up every time and throw it in a case. And that way it doesn't get beat up in traveling. So there you go, making a trap table. Not too difficult. So now let's take a look at putting together some matching mallet trays. Okay, so the mallet trays are pretty similar. Just go to your Home Depot and pick up a two by two piece of plywood. And as you can see, it was six bucks basically. And we do it a lot like the other thing. And I picked up a little, little stripping, one and a half by three quarter pine, 65 cents a foot. I think I got an eight foot piece of it. So I'd have plenty for a couple of tables and other projects. Here is the basic stick tray by itself. And we're going to do very much like we did in the trap table. The only difference is this will have edges to keep the mallets from rolling off. So measure out one long side and your two shorter sides and then cut strips. Now you could cut them square or here I mitered the strips. It really won't matter because you're going to cover all that in the carpeting. But I just mitered them. And then we are going to glue those. So then you just put a few screws in there. Again, make sure they don't go all the way through to the other side. Because you don't want to catch your hand on a point. And screw a few in there. A little glue. A couple of screws. It's going to hold it. You will want to countersink these so they're not sticking up. 
get out your carpet. We're going to measure and cut again. And first we are going to just cover the whole thing. We're going to get a piece big enough to go all around. You know, paint your wood and tack your carpet on. And again, we only have to paint the underside. And then we just fold it over. And this time you have to work from the top to make everything fit. Now, the nice thing about this sort of carpeting, it is stretchable. So I sprayed the whole tray with spray adhesive and then took and folded it over, made sure I used like a putty knife to help push it into the corners, get it nice and tight, and then kept working my way all the way down to the other edge. Put a few staples into the top there to hold it tight against the wood strips and then flipped it over like this picture and pulled it tight and stapled it and stapled the two ends and trimmed it all just like on the big table. Now, if we look at this at the top of it, but you can see some of the staples in there and that just kept the carpeting real tight against it. And it was that easy to do. And then to mount it, I put a pearl tom bracket on, which I have all kinds of those laying around. And I can put a tube through that and then put that tube through a Gibraltar clamp on my gong rack. And that's basically it. So here's some examples of my current setup. In this one, you can see the mallet tray with mallets on. I have one on each side. There's one on the far side. You can see the closer one here. Here's another picture from the front. And I like it really well because my mallets are up there. And while I'm standing, I can grab whatever I need. And there's the table. I don't have to get down to play any bowls. So there's no more up and down. Everything's, you know, at a standing level. And that works for me. I can hang some bells under each tray. Or as you see on the right side of the picture, I have a small gong hanging there. And it works out really well. So there you go, making some tables and mallet trays. See you next time.